time for Papa's Playbook as Greg Papa goes deep on the game tape. We'll get to the jet sweep in a minute. On KNBR, the, the sports, leader. sports leader. We got finally got an open for this thing, too. Spider 3 Y banana. Very nice. Very I nice. do like Spider 2 with a full black is eligible. Yeah. Andrew Luck going right. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the Raiders ran that play the other night. They did. They ran a Spider 2 Y banana. It didn't work. All right, so uh, just as you would expect, and uh, by the way, it is great to hear the audio of these plays from uh, Friday night, but if you are by, uh, if you're at work, for example, you're not working, it's Monday, it's almost noon, spend your uh, lunch hour with us and check us out on YouTube, and you can see the video as well, or on Twitch. So take it away. What do we got? Uh, Brock Purdy. Now, Brock started against New Orleans in preseason game number two, but he didn't have... His receivers from Netflix, so they got out there and they played. Debo Samuel played, George Kittle played, and the goal going into the game was to get them involved right away. So we're going to start with back-to-back plays, the stutter and go down the left sideline, the pump, and a great play by Debo to keep his feet in bounds, and then the, uh, the amazing throw over the middle to George Kittle, where Brock just lofted it right over the top and dropped it in to convert a third and six. I know you all watched Netflix in the summertime, John, and receivers. So it is Brock going to his receivers, Debo and Kittle over the middle. J.P. Mason will start as the running back. Chris Conley goes in motion. Debo is out wide left. Birdie going to pump his way and go down the sideline to Debo. Made the catch. Did he get his feet inbounds? He did. Yes. Inside the Raider, 41-yard line. Third down and sick. Throw down the middle. Caught by George Kittle. First down, 49ers. What a throw by Brock right over the top. What a catch by Kittle. All right, so let's take you through each play. And the first one is the first play of the game. Mm -hmm. So Chris Conley will go in motion across there. Really not a tip if the Raiders are playing a man or zone here. They just kind of widen out. Uh, but watch Brock, and he's going to look at the eyes of number 40, the safety that will come down on the play. That is Jaden Grant. And once the pump brings Grant down, think it is going to be a Debo shorter route. Then Debo does the stutter, and he gets on top of the rookie corner, MJ Devonshire. It's not a great stutter and go by Debo Samuel, but the footwork, the catch on the sideline, that is a high degree of difficulty play for Debo. But again, Brock with the pump, and that brings the safety up. So now he knows he's got one-on-one. The ball placement for Brock going back shoulder there is just beautiful. A high point. you got to get both feet down. Debo doesn't make a catch like this very often. I remember the Thursday night home opener against the Giants, John, when Ayuk did not play. He had an even better stutter and go against the Dory Jackson. So watch the stutter here. MJ Devonshire, the rookie corner out of pit. He still stays on top. Debo does not have enough to get completely on top of him, but he does get even with him, turns to find the ball. Slight push off there by Debo. They're not going to call that. But that, look at that ball placement by Brock Purdy. Debo's not a big receiver like Ayuk with long arms and big hands. He went up, got it on top of the helmet, gets both feet down. That is hard, right? And then left, and he goes out of bounds. That was a shot, the first play of the game, to get the ball to Debo Samuel. All right, now the one to George Kittle. And this one is a third down and six. And Kittle, what they're looking for here, Brock told Vern, uh, we were talking to, uh, Vern was there, but we were talking to him on the sideline during the game in the third quarter. Uh, if they were going to get a Tampa 2 look with a middle linebacker, uh, would have to pick up George Kittle. So the Raiders did show that look, and they run this play in practice a lot. So Kittle just, uh, the middle linebacker, is not going to sink deep enough. The safety backpedals, and Kittle's looking for the ball right away. That's Mauga, the middle linebacker. He has to get back, but he doesn't get up high enough. And it's a great ball by Brock Purdy. When you watch it on some clips, you're like, wow, he threw that into triple coverage. But he saw it the whole way. They work on this play a lot in in practice, and it's just the look that they they got with George Kittle. So watch Kittle uh, in line there, just a little bit detached, and watch 43, Mauga, the middle linebacker, just does not get enough depth there like Fred Warner would in a true Tampa 2. He gets back, but there's room there. And look at Kittle. Like Debo going up high for the ball above his helmet, able to secure that. That was a third down and six play, John, a big-time play there. So right away they wanted to get Debo involved. 
They threw him later a bubble in the game. Second play of the game went to Kittle over the middle for 15. But look at the ball placement there by Brock. And when you see him change his arm angle, trajectory to be able to loft the ball over the top of Malga and in front of the safety, Big time play by Brock Purdy. Look at that ball, John. Is that perfect? Well, you know, the thing was, too, is I heard some criticism of this play, and I guess those people who are criticizing don't watch the 49ers very much because they do this all the time during the season, that layered throw that Brock makes. That's one of the best things he does is that layered throw like that, and it's that's a design play, like you said. And he and if you watch Brock's eyes, he's looking at him the whole time. He knows that the, the – uh, the middle linebacker didn't get deep enough, and he layered it right between the middle linebacker and the safety, and then George knew, and he went up and got it. It was a great play. All right, here's the scramble now. Second and five scramble for Brock, and he's going to identify that the Raiders are playing man on this play. But we talked, you know, during his rookie year when he had to come in off the bench and make those plays, if he had one error in his game. Now watch when he looks left. Everybody's pretty much manned up. He doesn't like any of the matchups there. But what, what happened to him when he was a, a first-year player? He would often, in this situation, retreat in mm-hmm. the pocket or get out to his left. There's a natural hatch for him to get out there on the right side. So he ducks through that. I'd like to see him keep himself alive as a thrower a little bit more there. But I think he knew that there was man coverage by the Raiders. Nobody was really going to uh, open up. So watch him in the pocket here. He just doesn't like any of the matchups and he knows this is a second down scramble so everybody's manned up and no one breaks clear uh to make a throw but watch him dominic pooney will make the block to push inside and there's a natural hatch there with colton mckivitz is that colton at right tackle mm-hmm. i think it is yeah and then he just gets out now he does tuck it away i'd like to see him jeff garcia that one a little bit because now they're all coming for him because he's committed to be a runner but uh, he's smart. He puts his foot in the ground. He makes a man miss in space, and he's like a running back. See the way he changes hands with the football? The ball was in the right side hand, got it over in the left side hand. All right, you're talking about the layered throws. This one here to Chris Conley is the signature of the 49er offense here and the layered throw. So Kittle comes in motion. They're showing man there. Conley's going to run an over route. So they fake the stretch to J.P. Mason going left. In this situation, you do not block the backside end. So when Brock comes out of that action, he knows he's got 92 Ellerson Smith in his face. So he's got to get outside of him to give himself a throwing lane. Now look at Conley. They drop him on the over, and you were talking about the layered throw. So this is a three-level throw for Brock. It is a signature in this offense. There's one short. Conley's intermediate. There's one more downfield but you get a great angle on the all 22 if you're watching on the stream and from behind brock so the stretch they all go left he's going to keep it i call it a boot kyle calls it a keep he keeps it there he knows the backside end is not blocked and now watch conley conley's going to flash in the intermediate level he's got short he's got middle he's got long look at the throw there He's got to get it away Sorry, from know. Ellerson Smith, who is a 6'6 defensive end, not blocked. Look at the ball placement there to Conley. You have to lead him as he's running that over route. Perfect. Conley makes the catch and get out of bounds. So just great work there by Brock Purdy. You know, the interception he threw at the end uh, a little bit, and, and Debo played well, but you're trying to work on things. They wanted to throw Debo that shot on the stutter and go on the first play. They went back to a Debo man beater, and he just didn't get enough separation with Sam Webb. Webb made a great play to tip the ball up in the air, and the safety, uh, Chris Smith, intercepted it. So uh, I thought maybe they'd give Brock one more series because he's not happy to end his night on an INT. But he he played well, obviously, and people were freaking out about him making a tackle on Smith. I don't care what he's playing. He does not want to give up a pick six there. Kyle even said he hoped he'd just get out of the way. But Brock didn't put himself in harm's way. He got knocked down. He had grass stains on both shoulder pads and on his pants. But uh, it was good to see Brock out there with his playmakers, his receivers. And they obviously hided, hided, uh, you know, highlighted Debo right away on the stutter and go. And, and, uh, and George Kittle as well. But those are staples in what the Niners do. His ability to climb up in the pocket on the scramble, John, that's this. He did that more and more last year. Don't retreat. Don't get out to your left. Go out to your right. Step up. 
I would have liked to see him dip the shoulder, but I think he realized everybody's manned up here. I got no one to go to. They're playing man. I'll run for the first down, make one guy miss in space, train, change arms. But the real big-time throw was that throw to Chris Conley on the boot going right with a defensive end right in his face and to be able to fit that ball in. That That is the signature play of the 49er offense. So I think Brock is ready, John, for two weeks from the night. There you go. That is uh, beautiful. Papa's playbook. Uh, we'll do that every Monday to take some of the key looks. By the way, there were a couple of defensive plays that were key. The uh, Malik Collins play, I'm sure you've seen this on video and you guys played it, where he he just literally dispatched of two offensive linemen to make that tackle at the line of scrimmage. I tell you, I, I, I love Eric Armstead, uh, but he got injured, you know, and he just wasn't playing enough. And to get him in there and some of the new guys they brought on this defensive line in the way that they could not, uh, that, that stretch last year, and you know, in the playoffs, and they, they had so much trouble. Hopefully, they can stop the run a little bit better. But man, that was that was maybe the most impressive play I saw. Collins just throwing two offensive linemen away, and then making the tackle on the on the back. Man. He's a beast. I mean, uh, and Eric Armstead's a bigger player. It's just that Malik is shorter. He's six two, where Eric was six six. He and DeForest Buckner. Now you got two guys that are traditional, and they don't even play zero or one. They, they're more three techniques or two eyes. They call them sometimes. But Hargrave and Malik are just quintessential D tackles in the NFL. The other thing they do a little differently than Armstead and Buckner is they're they're better at the twist game, the stunt game with Nick. They just they maybe because they're lower to the ground, but watch when you start playing for real in this jet offensive line. They they you know, the Tyron Smith is there and Morgan Moses and John Simpson and we're gonna find out how good they are because they're gonna have to deal with this line and, and Nick has been as the rapper on the you know E T or T E stunt those guys are just better at it, setting it up. But Malik's a beast. Um, I even wonder if if Floyd, and you know, we talked to Matt Barrows, Johnny's optimistic, and they're out practicing today. I don't think Leonard Floyd's practicing today, but we'll see. Off tomorrow, then they, they go on Wednesday before the player for a purpose dinner on Wednesday night. If Floyd can't play in the opener and Gross Matos has got a week-to-week deal, I wonder about moving, you know, what are those inside guys outside? Like Malik Collins, you could play him at end. I don't think he's played much out there, but he's not only physical and tough inside, but he does have twitch. And then you got the grave digger, and then you got, you know, Kevin Givens and Jordan Elliott behind. So even with the injury to Kalia Davis and T.Y. McGill, I'm going to be anxious to see if he makes the team tomorrow at 1 o'clock, John. But they got, I, I think the D tackle rotation here is the best. I've seen it for a long time when you got the grave digger, Malik Collins, Jordan Elliott, Kevin Givens, and then maybe T.Y. McGill makes the football team. But Collins, you know, we made a big deal about Leonard Floyd playing on Friday night, making his Niners debut, but that was also the first time we saw Malik Collins. This guy's been a good player in the NFL for a long time with Dallas, with the Raiders for one year, three years in Houston, and last year he was in this system because he played for D'Amico Ryans. Yeah, I was encouraged because, it, you know, it looked like, he was going to be part of the, you know, like a pass rush package, but he certainly can play against the run. He looked pretty good. And the other defensive play, uh, you thought it was maybe going to win the game for him was early in the fourth quarter. How about uh, Darrell Luter Jr. as we've Science talked all these corners, made that nice play in the end zone, tried kind of a fade route lob play there. Yeah, it wasn't the Raiders, a good ball. And, it was a bad throw. But it uh, looked like he kind of saved the game for a minute, and then the Raiders came back and got that field goal. But uh, good stuff from some of the young guys. So there you go. There's uh, Papa's Playbook, which we'll do every Monday, not to be confused with Papa's Plays of the Week, which will get you once the season gets going as well. So there you go. It is Pop and Lund on a Monday edition of the show. Uh, our good friend Vern Glenn is going to join us at the bottom of the hour. We love Vern, by the way. And he's going to join us, and we'll talk some Niners. He was in Vegas as well. So uh, which show did you see on Saturday, by the way? You, you said you went out and saw a, a show on Saturday? Boy George. Boy George. I forgot. Karma yeah. Chameleon. Very nice. Very cool. Yeah, I missed you because I was going to go over there and see you at the hotel. But uh, you were you were gone. I was gone. So. Yeah, oh, it was a good gone. time. The wind's nice, by the way. I mean, we did our show there on Friday. It was absolutely amazing. If you miss, I sent out some of the videos of the of the palatial studios, and I'm not kidding. I mean, talk palatial. I think it's like a $15 million studio. Awesome. Uh, and then, you know, I, I left and everything like that. Pool or pond, pond would be nice for you. But then my sister was over there, and so I called her, and they're like, well, let's just have dinner here. And, man, we had, it was nice. You ate at the wind? Yeah. We ate at the, you uh, went to Sinatra's? We did. Yeah, it was very nice. I've been there a couple years man, ago. Man, had a good time. Had a little chicken parm, had some uh, nice bread, all that kind of stuff. Man, it was beautiful. Did not do wine. I, I, sh- I probably should. You didn't have done do something. red wine at Sinatra's? No, because they they had. I'm a big fan of old fashioned and the and the uh, 
the guy who was serving us is like, we make this old fashioned, da 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 da. Because I said, you make a good old fashioned, and he convinced me on it. And it was pretty good. So I felt like it's I was a classic place. Yeah, it was very nice. And he even said, hey, how about five bucks for a double? I said, you got a deal. So that was nice. Mm, I love scotch. It was very nice. Was, what, what, we know Sinatra was a Dodger fan. Yeah. But he also was a Mike Murphy, Willie Mays fan. Mm-hmm. Who was Sinatra's football? It had to be the Jets from Hoboken? The Probably. Giants? Was it Sinatra had to be a something football New York. fan? I don't even remember. I don't remember. I do remember seeing him in clubhouses uh, in baseball. He was I, a big I, baseball yeah, fan. big baseball. Was he a football fan? I don't Sinatra? know if he was. To look. He was a I Jimmy Hoffa that. fan, so maybe maybe the Giants in that one corner end zone there with Hoffa. Yeah. Uh, by the way, update from all the insiders shooting video. Uh, Ricky Pearsall is back, but he still is in the blue jersey, the non-contact. Right, no one's touching him. Yeah. No Do not Ricky. press him and touch that shoulder. But solid. Do you know what shoulder it is? So. And by uh, by the way, your guy Ike Yadam is back too. So. Yeah, I'd say he's full go. He's full go. He he's was good running hard. I think he could have played in the game. Isaac Yadam. Yeah, so he's back as well. So that's the latest on the Niners. All right, uh, bottom of the hour, we'll get some more Niners from Vern Glenn. We haven't talked all about our uh, trip to uh, Vegas and those great studios. We've got some stuff to give you there. And we're still not done with the Giants. Monday edition of the show. It's Pop in London on the Sports Theater.